Okay, it's time to clean the bus. So we're gonna pressure wash it. It's interesting that this side is all covered in lichen. See all that? End up there. This was the shaded side. And then the other side, it's basically the opposite. There's no growth, but the sun faded all the paint. So I guess 23 years of sitting in the same spot will do that to you. The seal on the top is totally roached. I'm just gonna rip it off because it's just dangling. So the game plan here is to use some simple green heavy duty cleaner, the purple stuff in this pressure washer, to clean the car. I've got the soap nozzle on, which I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing it starts by laying down some soap. Let's see what we get. So I've run through this side with the electric wash, pressure washer and some purple heavy duty simple green. And it looks pretty good. I'm using a 40 degree tip, which is the softest of tips. And it's, it's getting some stuff off, but it's really not very aggressive. And I can still feel stuff in there, like in the paint. So I'm probably gonna switch to a more aggressive tip. And before you go telling me, oh, you should never use a pressure washer on paint. This car has sat in one spot outside for 23 years. Its paint is ruined. It's covered in crap. I'm getting the crap out of the paint. There's nothing wrong with using a pressure washer. I could use a sandblaster if I wanted. I'm gonna choose a pressure washer at this point. So we're gonna switch to a more aggressive tip and maybe damage the paint. So having switched to the 25 degree tip, which is a smaller nozzle, way more aggressive, we definitely got way more of the stuff out of the paint. It feels way better. Got most of the little crusties out of everywhere. Got a lot of crusties out from under here. And yeah, there's absolutely some areas where the paint was questionable and I hit it with the pressure washer and the paint came off. And that's fine because those spots obviously are an issue anyway. So honestly, I'm gonna put on a more aggressive tip and I'm gonna hit all the rusted spots because any paint that's gonna come off with a pressure washer needs to be dealt with anyway. So we're gonna get this car clean. So we're uncovering something and that is that this car has been painted, at least the front. The front, probably to this body line, has been painted. And I say that because all the paint's coming off, but then it's actually, it's, it's coming off. So that makes a little bit of sense. It makes a fair bit of sense. It's hard to tell for sure, but that might have just been clear coat, but it, it has a lot of tint to it. It's hard to call that clear coat to me. The metallic is in there. So that's good. So I just blasted all this and that's all the paint that came off. So I don't know that this seam rusted out. I think the paint just failed right here. I don't see any reason at all to have to replace this panel. It looks completely solid. It just, the paint failed. This was a paint failure. That, same thing. This side looks totally solid. That side needs replaced. But that's the only big issue. time to remove the square headlights. Square headlights came standard on all Vanagons from 1986 to 1991, but I hate them. I don't like the look of them. I know it's very 80s, but they also just suck. A couple of reasons why they suck. Uh, there really weren't any good upgrades for these. You can put a higher wattage bulb in them, but they have these DOT US market only lenses that are just absolute crap. The European models are way better, but these ones sort of suck. So they don't project light very well. Also, they had these crazy issues with the headlight adjusters that they just kind of dissolve. See? And for a while, you couldn't get those parts at all. So what I like to do is remove the square headlights and put the earlier round headlights, single rounds, not the South African four rounds, but single round headlights from a 1980 to 1985 Vanagon on there. I personally like the look. I also know I can get real cheap seven inch round headlights that are perfect. 
um, all the Jeep aftermarket LED ones and stuff like that. Some spectacular lighting power is available for rounds, and I like the look. So we're going to do that. So today. here's the round headlight assembly. It's in what's called the headlight bucket with its own adjusters built in. It's just a 7-inch round sealed beam headlight. But the back, the back is different. So you can't actually just plug your square headlights into here. You need to cut these three wires and then solder on a different pigtail, which fits that. I just put them in. I didn't wire, it, wire them up yet, but I just mounted them. The next little issue is this bracket here. This bracket is specific to the square headlights and it's gonna interfere with the round headlight grill. There's two options. You can drill out these rivets or you can grind into the back of the grill so that it fits properly. I'm gonna take these rivets out. You can always put them back in. You'll lose this, but you can always find another one off your parts van. All drilled out. Pops right off, you can always put it right back on. Face, I like that. So we're only using the outer ones and the middle one. This screw here and here don't go into anything. And in this grill in particular, it's actually broken on the bottom tab here, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not necessarily gonna drive it like this. I just, it makes it look complete. It does it for me. I don't know if a lower grill will fit because of that dent, and I don't have the inserts that go in here. So we're not gonna try the lower grill yet, but soon. These guys over here are working on putting on the wiring adapters for the round headlights because the wiring's different. So we got the Go Westy adapter kit and then we just cut all the stock crap off and wired it in hard, hard wired it because we're never going back to squares. Well guys, I got the lower grill on all but that middle clip. That's fine because it's uh, bowed in right there. But I want to put this bra on over it, which would cover some of that up. I got this great bra from my buddy Brian. I appreciate it, Brian, but it just shredded the second I tried to stretch it over everything. It's got enough tears in here and stuff that I don't think we're going to run this. I think this bra has seen better days. We're poking at some bubbles here, and uh, mm, there's a hole there now. That's the only hole on the car, but... I mean, I knew this panel would get replaced. I still think I'm going to drive it for a year before I do body work. So that'll probably get like weird patched for that time. I don't know yet. We'll Just see. going through and treating a little bit of the rust spots. Um, might not brush it back much, but just going to neutralize it. Going around the, uh, the bottom of the sliding door here couple little spots and just brushing it back and putting some sem rust mort on it okay all of the seam sealers have been picked out brushed it out a little bit with the wire brush we'll just put some sem rust mort on there and it'll clean it it's right all up good i mean obvious garbage down there but that's always the case but here we've got multiple layers it's crusty this panel seems fine this panel is bad even down in here, crusty, but this panel seems fine. This panel's bad. So, at least this arch. And then down here, really pretty solid until we get to over here. Then it went through. So, it needs that rocker and that arch. 